Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're talking about observability, the emerging tech that helps us manage IT infrastructure by providing better monitoring of the data stack. To explore that, to dig into those big ideas, I'm joined by Rohit Chaudhry, Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Excel Data. Uh, Rohit, very good to have you with us today. Morning, James. It's a pleasure to be with you today. So observability feels like it's a, a trend that is very much on the way up. I've heard so much more about it the last few years. Uh, we, we know that observability is gaining adoption as a core part of infrastructure management. I think you see some problems with the, the way observability is deployed. What's, what, what, what's your beef with the way companies are doing observability? <laughs> well, <laughs> if you have one, I'm, I'm assuming you have one, Rohit. Yeah, this, this is actually a pretty loaded question. And I think, you know, we need to break it a little Good. bit. Good, okay. Further, yeah, we, we need I don't to want to put words in your mouth, by the way. I just, yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> For sure. Uh, you know, I think we need to break it down a little bit. I think traditionally, if you look at what has really happened is with the advent of, you know, IT applications, uh, a lot of systems and, and the way that people would interact with each other, systems, processes, everything got automated. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, on the back of 20 years of very successful IT application deployment came companies like Datadog, Dynatrace, New Relic, AppDynamics. And they essentially started with something called system monitoring. Not that it was being not being done earlier. People would write their own stack, do it yourself methodology. And then they discovered that, you know, the whole observability or monitoring stack was getting very complicated for monitoring IT applications. Mm -hmm. Now it was what great. Year, you what know, year sorry to interrupt? What years are we talking about now? Like several years back, or what, what's the time frame? Yeah, we we are probably talking about 2008 to 2015 time frame. You know, which All is right. about you know, I would say about 15 years back when okay. the advent of App Dynamics, Datadog happened. I think what ended up happening was that you know those companies have overstated their ability in terms of going and talking about their ability to monitor data stacks as well. They don't, you know, and the reason is very simple that the world is far more complex when you're processing petabyte scale data. And uh, what ends up happening is that today the enterprise does not have enough talent. You know, if I could talk about three key trends, one, data volumes are just going exponentially higher. Second, data complexity or interconnected systems exhibit a massive amount of complexity when they have to deliver data to internal and external stakeholders. And that complexity is not gonna come down anytime soon. And the mm -hmm. third thing is that, you know, lack of talent. Mm -hmm. Now, what is going on right now is that, you know, enterprises sometimes, not for fault of their own, they're actually trying to retrofit the previous generation application monitoring platforms to monitor even their data platforms. And when you're building data products, when you're building data intensive applications, the previous paradigm actually does not work. And that, is my beef with how people are implementing observability in this modern world. Well, let me let me educate myself, if I may, ask you a question so I clarify <laughs> this in my own mind. So there's, I think about observability is tends to be when we use the term, it's often, it's application observability along with the hardware. It's like, is the application really running? Is it stalled? Is it crashed? Is it performing up to speed? But then we're talking about data observability. Is that the same thing or is it actually a somewhat different idea? Or am I it's totally confused here? Yeah, it's completely different. So yeah. the outcomes that you tend to accomplish or when you have an IT application, when you have an application, typically it is the user who has taken some action either on a desktop or a mobile screen through touch. Mm -hmm. And there is a certain workflow that gets triggered and that workflow gets monitored for its efficiency, completeness, user experience. That is essentially application monitoring. But when you're thinking about data, you actually don't have fixed outcomes or fixed intent with what you end up doing with data. You're looking for trends that are hiding behind massive volumes of data that you've collected from various different sources. So what are you looking for? You're probably looking for who are the people in, in a particular zip code who are buying number nine Nike shoes, or you're looking at the progression of disease. Now, these activities were not actually started by the click of a button on a desktop or you know through touch. These are actually massive data processing transformation steps that people or enterprises undertake to identify or find out what those patterns are, trading patterns, disease patterns, weather patterns. And when you think about those systems, those systems actually are far more complex, orders of magnitude more complex than application observability. Mm -hmm. Application observability tools and platforms, those were essentially meant to just you know, monitor workflows, but we're not even talking about workflows over here. 
So you're, you're talking about really the, the, the larger data picture, not merely workflow, just to clarify. Absolutely. You know, if you think of what has really gone or changed in the recent world is also the lack of structure. You know, now we're talking about only unstructured data, which then gets married with some of the structured data that applications are producing. So it's a hodgepodge of everything. And, you know, enterprises can't seem to slow down on collecting more data. You know, we have customers who are now collecting close to half a petabyte of data every single day. Mm -hmm. And what it really needs is basically a complete rethink on how observability should be done. Observability is no longer about, you know, showing some beautiful dials and charts. It's actually about getting to the insight very, very closely. Now, one of the unique things, for example, my company does is that we have the core ability to sort of, you know, synthesize signals between infrastructure, data reliability, and the pipelines. You know, data pipelines are nothing but abstractions on the business processes, which end up depositing data for both internal and external stakeholders. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, data reliability is really important because what has really changed is that enterprises intend to activate their data and put it to operational use cases. I was very, you know, I was not surprised when I saw Unity's announcement that they fed bad data to their algorithm and their stock prices crashed. It's not mm. a surprise. I think, you know, we, the more companies and enterprises try to activate their data, the more they're going to find the value of highly reliable enterprise grid that can produce highly reliable data for its purposes. And that is what data observability will bring to the enterprises. All right, well, let's, let's, give, let's give some advice to companies that are dealing with the idea of, of data observability. So other than merely just buy Excel data, but I mean, just, if you're gonna say, if someone comes to you and says, you know, Rohit, Rohit I'm, I'm really, we're, we're struggling with this issue. What do you say to companies who wanna select and deploy an observability you know, instance? What advice do you give them to, to, make the first it, to optimize it? Go ahead, please. <laughs> The first answer is that, you know, start working with us. And the second answer is that, uh -oh. you know, <laughs> just look at, you know, your surface area. I think, you know, enterprises need to look at a few things. And those are first, criticality. Where is your data most critical? Do you have SLAs, SLOs, economic penalties, financial penalties attached to your commitment to your customers, both internal and external, in your ability to deliver reliable data? I think I would start with that. Second, I would consider the level of talent that you have in the company and you know the decision to whether to go and build your own observability stack is something that only that particular enterprise can take. And therefore I would you know really dig into as to what is the talent level, what is the availability for building new revenue generating business use cases as opposed to building observability. And the third thing I would basically look at is the longevity of the platform. I mean, are, is, are your use cases, whether it is data at rest, data in motion, and data for consumption, are those three use cases going to get covered with the selection that you're making, not just for today, but for the next three to five years? Well, all right, talking longevity, it must be three to five years. In other words, there are platforms that are not able to scale. I mean, what, what's, what's typically the problem with longevity? I think a couple of things, you know, some companies, they actually have very single dimensional, unidimensional views of how observability solutions should be built. And they're great for, you know, point solutions. But typically when you go to the enterprise, you know, they have actually a multi-generational technology sprawl, which extends on the left hand from mainframes and all the way to Azure Synapse and the latest right. and latest on right. CSPs on right. So I think, you know, what you see typically in an enterprise is that, you know, they're going to deal with a lot more complexity than if you were just doing one or two use cases. And I think, you know, that vision needs to come from the data engineering team that, you know, what is the future of this data initiative? And I think what is also going on right now, at least from my personal experience, is that, you know, it's not just the data engineering team which is any more interested or only interested in these initiatives. You know, we are now being put in front of chief data officers who report directly into the CEOs. You know, when you have to pay a fine, a hefty one, because of poor quality of data to FTC, you know, the CEO will change. And I think, you know, it's becoming a top level, a board level conversation now. Hmm. All right. So I want to I want to give you a chance. You've, you've mentioned Excel data. Um, I want to give you a chance to, to, to sell your product, so to speak. So, so how, how is Excel data addressing the observability needs? What, what makes it better in a nutshell? Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I was just <laughs> waiting for this opportunity. I, think well, I, I would imagine. So you got you have your, your soapbox. Go ahead, Rohan. Yeah, I think, you know, I would basically put that in, in three quick points. One, that, you know, we are ready for the enterprise. 
I think uh, it is important to deal with the complexity, the aspirations of the enterprise to become very, very strategic. And therefore, you know, consequent to that, it essentially means that you also have to be multidimensional and give them, give enterprises a single pane of glass so that they can make their data operations efficient, agile, and reliable. And I think we bring that through our multidimensional capability, which monitors all the way from infrastructure to data to data pipelines and provides you insight as to what is going on really in your data system. And the third and the most important thing is that, you know, we were built for scale. You know, I have a data engineering background and many of my co-founders and the entire team comes from companies which have dealt with massive amounts of data. And that experience and that expertise is very difficult to replicate. You know, we work very, very closely with the data engineering teams and we understand their pains day in, day out. And I think those three are really good reasons for, you know, any enterprise who is doing data processing at scale to consider Excel data. Well, let me, let me ask about the idea of the single pane of glass, because obviously the single pane of glass is a really big idea across enterprise IT. Companies are, are hungering for that, especially in the world of multi-cloud. They want one, one dashboard to help them manage all their cloud instances. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure that really exists truly. So when you talk about a single pane of glass, you mean about infrastructure monitoring. So it's, it's doing what the classic application monitoring folks did, plus it's doing the data stack. I mean, how, how, how all encompassing is your single pane of glass? So a clear differentiation for us is that we do it for data applications and data systems only. We actually don't go and look at, you know, your IT applications. Right. And I think what will end up happening is that this differentiation or this division is going to get more intense and more clear. You know, in five years of running this company, we've actually not sold into IT. It's a very clear separation and division within the enterprise that data is a separate initiative. It runs on its own. It has its own significant amount of budget because, you know, that is the initiative that gives acceleration. So I think, you know, this division is going to get more pronounced as, as time goes by. In the next five years, I think data officers will have a lot more influence over the state and the future of the enterprise. Um, in terms of, you know, how companies evolve their own thinking around observability and what they end up doing, with some of those elements in terms of a, being a single pane of glass, I think the key things that everybody's looking at is give me insights as opposed to just raw data. Get me to automation because as I have this multi-dimensional, multi-generational technology sprawl, I have I'm I'm for sure if I'm an enterprise leader, I will have to deal with multiple clouds and multiple technologies. The best of breed and the best of technologies for their specific use cases that they're solving. But across those use cases, they would still like a common trusted plane of operations so that they can run their operations reliably. And I think that is what we uniquely bring in. But we are very specific to data technologies, whether you're on on-premise or whether you're on private cloud or you're on public cloud. And, and even on the public cloud, there are like so many different variations. What is really going on is that, you know, there's been the advent of CSP provided solutions. But in addition to that, there are these amazing ISV solutions, which keep coming year after year, and they're bringing tremendous innovation for customers to just accelerate their strategic initiatives. And it's very hard for them to say no, but guess what? Some of these ISV and CSP solutions can actually burn a hole in your pocket and they can be very expensive. So the real question for the enterprise then becomes is that how do you maintain the cost to value? And I think observability going to, is going to play a big part in that. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the future of observability because I think it's it's clearly it's a trend on the way up. I think we, that's there's, there's no argument with that. Uh, so, what are a few milestones you'd expect in the years ahead? I mean, what will observability look like in oh twenty twenty seven or or so? I think observability will start driving uh, you know most of the data initiatives. I think what will end up happening is if you think of what does really observability do, you know it basically collects all your operational metrics. It collects all the information about your users. It collects all the information about how data is being accessed. Mm -hmm. And when you put all of these three things together, what it really tells you is that what is the user really looking for? Mm -hmm. And the, the user is nothing but a proxy to your business. So I think that metadata repository is going to drive a lot of strategic initiatives for the business. As an example, you know, we work with one of the largest telcos in the US and they actually use all their you know, data records to determine where should they go and apply infrastructure in the US and how should they plan their you know, network infrastructure. I think that is a huge testament to the fact that observability is going to not just drive 
uh, you know, stability, efficiency, and uh, you know, uh, scalability inside your data in infrastructure. But it's also going to allow you to make those business decisions very, very rapidly. So I think you know, there's going to be a shift to a higher plane, which is the value statements will be very clear for enterprises to understand. I think the second thing that we will see is a mass adoption of you know observability. It will not. We won't have the same interview. We'll actually talk about you know how many thousands of customers are on you know this data observability bandwagon. Mm -hmm. And I think the third thing that we will see is that there's going to be a huge recognition of not being able to support two things. And what are those two things? One, that you're building your own data platform and data products. And the second is that you won't be able to in parallel develop and support your own built by yourself, do it yourself stack of observability. I think those would be the three major trends. Hmm. Yeah, it, it seems that one of the things that observability has going for it is that it is, it's, it's knowledge about data. It gives us a better view of the data. And since of course data runs everything, obviously anything that helps us see the data more clearly is gonna get larger. Rohit, yeah. I, I very much appreciate you sharing your expertise today. I learned a ton. Oh, uh, thank you so much. And I, I hope you come back and talk with us again sometime. Yeah, I look forward to doing this again, James. Thank you so much for having me today.